everyone and welcome to Useful Graphic Design Tutorials. It's Caroline here and thank you ever so much for dropping by. And in this video we're going to show you how to create a simple cloud. As you can see from the image on the desktop, this is a very simple shape. Um, but what we're going to show you to do is create a gradient from dark to light or light to dark, whichever. And you can actually put um, text on this cloud but we're not going to do that for the moment because we actually have covered that in another tutorial. So let's get rid of that for the moment and open up our Inkscape desktop workspace. Okay, I've increased the size of mine somewhat and to do that I've simply clicked on the magnifying tool, as you can see like that, and to reduce it to go on to the zoom out tool. Don't forget when you've finished and you've got the right size that you need to deselect that um, magnifying tool and I tend to go onto the select and transform object. The first thing we need to do is to create four circles and we do that by clicking on the create circles, ellipses and arcs. Now these don't have to be perfect circles so just draw three or four and in actual fact if you do want to have a perfect circle simply press down the control key while you're holding the mouse and you will create a perfect circle. So once we've done that we need to rearrange them in some semblance of a cloud. So click on the select tool and then start to rearrange them in a cloud formation. That's a little strange isn't it? There we go. A little bulbous but never mind it will do. Okay if you're happy with the colour of the cloud, then that's fine. But, um, of course, Inkscape may have opened, um, keeping the settings of the previous project, and it may not be blue at all. So, to change that, simply select the circle you want, and then click on the blue that you want from the colour palette at the bottom here. Okay, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens when we've got three or four different blues. So let's uh, leave it like that for the moment and see what happens. We've actually got four separate circles here. And what we want to do is to combine them into one. So to do that, we first of all need to select all of the four circles. And we can do that by clicking the Select All Objects button there. Or we can do that by, um, cre um, by selecting Control a on the keyboard. We then go up to the path function on the toolbar, click on that and then select union. And that actually combines all of the four circles into one. You can see that by just simply um, moving them around uh, as one image. Let's make that a little bit smaller. And you simply do that by grabbing hold of the handle, keeping the mouse down, keeping the, I beg your pardon, keeping the mouse down and then resizing it. The last thing we're going to do is add a gradient to the cloud and the first thing um, you should do is to select the cloud and then click on the gradient tool which is this green button down here. That's it. Um, now just click on the workspace outside of the circle somewhere and drag the mouse across it. Um, you can move it up or down a little bit further in to make it um, lighter at the edge here. If you want to edit it further and perhaps put in some extra colour, go up to the Edit Gradient and the dialog box opens giving you a lot more options. For example, you can click in the middle of the triangle to make it somewhat darker. You can actually click on a different colour on the outside. For example, that could be an early morning cloud. And you can really play around with that until um, you get the sort of um, image that you want. You can grab hold of the square or the circle either end to make it darker or lighter. And as I say, simply play around with that until you've created the sort of image that you want. Okay, let's get rid of that. And that really is all we're going to do with regard to the cloud for today. A little tip though, when you're looking to save any image actually, make sure that it is completely inside of the work area. If, for example, you were looking to save that image, half of it is outside of the area, so when you saved it, you would simply be saving half of the image, which is, of course, not what you want. Anyway, that really brings the video to an end. Thank you very much for joining us, and if you do have any questions about what you've seen, or indeed you have any other feedback for us, please do contact us. You can do this by visiting our fan page on Facebook, the details of which you can find below. 
Other than that, we hope that you actually join us for our next tutorial. Until then, I'll say goodbye.